the fourth video on polynomials, factors and roots. The previous videos have looked at the definition of roots and factors and how to compute roots and factors for first order polynomials. In summary, we've shown that for a polynomial given as y equals f of x, then a root is given by any value of x such that f of x equals 0. For convenience, we also showed that factors can be represented in a particular format. And what we recommended is that you represent factors as x minus root, that is independent variable minus root, thus making the coefficient of the independent variable 1. This video is now going to look at factors and roots for higher order polynomials. So we're going to start with second order polynomials. Second order polynomials will have two roots. As shown earlier in the first video, we can determine these from a simple sketch. So if you take f of x and sketch it, you can find the roots by looking at the intercepts with a horizontal axis. But what we want to do now is look at an analysis method, which is a bit more efficient and quicker. And the method that you probably did at school was called completing the square. Again, we note that the aim is to set the function to zero and the use of unity coefficients where this makes sense. So let's have a look at a polynomial of the form ax squared plus bx plus c. Now at the moment, you'll notice that the coefficient of the x squared is not 1. So the first thing we do is take the a out of the brackets and rewrite the polynomial as x squared plus b over a times x plus c over a equals naught. Remember, we're interested in finding the roots, so extracting a doesn't affect the position of the roots. Now what we do next, you'll all be familiar with, is we write this as some form of square term. So we get this term here, x plus b over 2a all squared, and then we find in order to match the rest of the polynomial, the term we have left is c over a minus b squared over 4a squared. Now, if you're not convinced about this, it's gone a bit too quick, I suggest you write it down and confirm it to yourself later. OK, so having written it in this form, now what we want to do is solve for the values of x, which make this equal to 0. So what I'm going to do is first take the bits which don't depend on x onto the other side of the equation. So you'll see we get left with x plus b over 2a all squared. And the other bit, which goes on the other side of the equation, is b squared over 4a squared minus c over a. If I want to solve this, I hope it's obvious to you that I can write x equals minus b over 2a plus or minus the square root of b squared over 4a squared minus c over a. And if you're thinking, oh golly, this went a bit too quick, what we've actually done is we've said x plus b over 2a equals the square root of b squared over 4a squared minus c over a. That's from the top line. And then we simply moved the b over 2a to the other side of the equation. Now, if I rearrange this into a form which you're probably more familiar with, we get this thing down here at the bottom. x equals minus b over 2a plus or minus the square root of b squared minus 4ac all over 2a. And this you will be familiar with okay, from school. The standard quadratic formula for finding the roots of a quadratic. And what these slides have done very quickly is shown that this isn't a magic formula, but it can be derived very easily. So you want to prove that this has worked. What you could do is reconstruct the original polynomial from these roots. Now, the algebra here is probably slightly tedious, but you should be comfortable doing it. So what I'm going to do is, first of all, write down the two different roots. There's root 1, called p1. So I'm going to take the positive square root there. And there's root p2 with the negative square root. And um, what I'm going to do is say that I can write this quadratic as a, that was the bit we took out originally, times x minus p1, x minus p2. So you'll notice this is x minus root 1 times x minus root 2. 
Okay, so there's your standard form for your quadratic. Now, if you want to convince yourself that this works, you now need to substitute in those values of p and multiply it out longhand. So that's what we've got here. You'll notice this bit in here is minus p1, and this bit in here is minus p2. So essentially I've written x minus p1 times x minus p2, and what I recommend you do is multiply it out and verify to yourself that you get back the original quadratic. Once you've done that, you'll be happy with two different observations. Observation 1, the roots p1 and p2 are given by these formula up here. Observation 2, that I can now write my quadratic as a times x minus p1 brackets x minus p2. Let's do some examples then and find the roots and the factors of the following polynomial. So here it is, f of x equals 2x squared plus 6x plus 4. So first of all, I'm going to apply the standard quadratic formula. Here it is, x equals minus b over 2a plus or minus the square root b squared minus 4ac over 2a. And I simply substitute in the numbers. So what I've got from the upper quadratic is a equals 2 b equals 6 and c equals 4 and you'll see I've simply substituted those numbers into the formula to get minus 6 over 4 plus or minus 6 squared minus 4 times 2 times 4 all over 4. Now if I simplify that I end up with the solution that you see here okay which is that x equals minus 1.5 plus or minus the square root of 4 over 4 or minus 2 and minus 1. So finally, I want to rewrite the quadratic in standard form. So here we have it. The quadratic, which originally was 2 times x squared plus 3x plus 2, can now be written as 2 times x plus 2, x plus 1. And you'll notice, okay, that the 2 is minus the root. So the roots are at minus 2 and minus 1, and the factors are x plus 2 and x plus 1. Again, if you don't believe me, multiply that out longhand and you'll see that it works. You could also do a sketch to confirm that the answer is as you expect. So here's a sketch for you to look at. Uh, you should be able to produce this by yourself without much help. Again, you'll notice the roots at minus 2 and minus 1. OK, a second example. What about this polynomial? v equals t squared minus 5t plus 6. So again, we're not going to do anything clever. We'll just use a standard mechanistic solution and we'll stick things into the quadratic formula. So there we go. There's the quadratic formula. t equals minus b over 2a plus or minus the square root of b squared minus 4ac over 2a. And for this particular example, we've got a equals 1, b equals minus 5, and c equals 6. So substituting those numbers into the formula, you end up with t equals 5 over 2, plus or minus the square root of 1 over 2, or 2 and 3. And therefore, we can rewrite the polynomial in terms of its two factors, t minus 2 times t minus 3. Again, I can sketch this just to confirm that everything is as, as I expected. And again, you can see there's a root at 2, and there's a root at 3. What if the roots are complex? Well, if you've got complex roots, it's normal to leave the factor in quadratic form. Don't try and bring it down to a, a straight line equation. It won't work. And thus, the coefficients in the factor remain as real numbers. So for example, if you're asked to factorize this, 2x squared plus 6x plus 40, when you substitute it into the formula for the roots, what you will get is the following. The roots are given by minus 6 over 80 plus or minus the square root of 36 minus 320 over 80. Or if I expand this out, minus 6 over 80 plus or minus the square root, and here's where we've got a problem, 284 with a minus over 80. You need the square root of a minus number, and that's not going to give you a real solution. So if that happens, 
i.e. if you get a minus sign underneath the square root, just leave this in quadratic form. So don't try and reduce it to any simpler factors. So a summary. If you want to find the roots and factors of a second order polynomial, you can just use the standard quadratic formula which you studied at school. It's usual to write factors in monic form, which means the coefficient of the independent variable is 1, because this makes the link between the root and the factor explicit. Where the roots are complex, just leave the factor in quadratic form. Don't try and simplify it anymore. OK, before we finish, just a bit of an aside. A quadratic formula can be a bit messy and sometimes unnecessarily cumbersome. You can occasionally get the solution much more quickly by using inspection. So let's give an example. First of all, I'm going to assume that the polynomial is monic. So always make it monic before you start. It just makes life a bit easier. So here's an example for you to see. I've got x plus a times x plus b. And if I multiply this out, I get x squared plus a plus b times x plus a b. Now what do you notice? There's a clear link between the coefficients of the polynomial and the roots. So the roots here are minus a and minus b. You can see that because I've got x plus a, x plus b. Now look at the coefficients. You'll notice the middle coefficient is minus the sum of the roots. It's given us a plus b, whereas the roots are minus a and minus b. What about the constant term? You'll notice the third coefficient is the product of the roots. It's a times b. So these are very interesting observations. The second coefficient is minus the sum of the roots. The third coefficient is the product of the roots. Now, if you remember this observation, you can sometimes get the roots very, very quickly without going through the quadratic formula. And we'll give an example to illustrate. So here we go. I've got a polynomial, z squared plus 9z plus 18. And I'm going to assume this has got real roots, so it can be written as z plus a times z plus b. And what I'm interested in is what are the values of a and b. So first of all, I know that the middle coefficient is minus the sum of the roots. It's 9, and that means that a plus b equals 9. I know the last coefficient is 18, which is the product of the roots, or a b equals 18. So I've now, if you look here, got two simultaneous equations. a plus b equals 9, a b equals 18. Now, clearly this depends on your uh, mathematical uh, agility, but a good student will immediately spot solutions for a and b which satisfy these two equations. So what are the solutions? a equals 3 and b equals 6. And therefore, I can write my polynomial as z plus 3 times z plus 6. And clearly, the roots are at minus 3 and minus 6. And you will find this technique is very quick and very easy to use where the roots are simple. If the roots are simple, low-valued integers, you can usually spot this by inspection and avoid using the quadratic formula.